Hey, OG's upstairs getting a cup of coffee so we can get the show running. And that gives me some time to say a big thank you to the men and women of our armed forces serving our country and therefore allowing you and I to focus on prospering. So on behalf of men and women making this show in the basement and our friends at the Navy Federal Credit Union, a big shout out to our armed forces to begin the week. Let's all go stack some Benjamins together, shall we? Good morning, Christopher Robin. Oh, good morning, Winnie the Pooh. Live from Joe's Bomb's Basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's Mom's neighbor, Doug, and are you training your body for the new year? Well, what about your brain? I recently read about Pavlov's dogs, and now every time a bell rings, not only does an angel get its wings, I invest a dollar, plus I'm surrounded by a pool of liquid. Which kind? I won't say. To tell you how to train your mind to stick to your goals, from the 12 Rules of Attention, Dr. Joseph Cardillo is with us today. We'll also share headlines, a TikTok minute your mortgage broker will hate, and we'll throw out the Haven lifeline to someone with a question about fixed income. And of course, I'll have some trivia for you to drool over. And now, two guys who have their brains trained like Navy SEALs for deals, it's Joe and O-J-J-J-J-G. You've been waiting for this moment your entire life. How so? It's just time to go, man. It's Monday. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Glad you're awesome. focused, ready to go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday. <laughs> glad, <laughs> glad Shake you're, the dust off. <laughs> glad you're with it like OG is. This is the Stacky Benjamin Show. You made it here. You're here with us. We're celebrating the start to a new week. I'm Joe Saul. See hi. Average Joe Money on Twitter. He is... The man with the plan, Mr. Other Guy, or as we call him, OG. How are you, man? Original great, gangster. Great week. Well, all the above. It doesn't have to be either or. It can be both. But you had a good weekend, I'm assuming. I did, yeah. A friend in town. He's uh, trying to buy something that's that's down here. At, in, Dude, you could have you could have stopped that at I had a friend. I have a friend. A friend. Singular. So it's great. I have a friend. Yes. So that's new. That's exciting. <laughs> that's fantastic. But yes, but he's trying to buy something. It's down here. Real estate. Uh, no, uh, uh, con- uh, something else. But um, but anyway, so so he hung out at yes. my house for a little bit. A chainsaw. A, a chainsaw. It's close. It's like a chainsaw. Yes. It's uh, uh, the world's best board game. Close. God, you're so close. But anyway, so hung out here, played a little golf. We did that. We uh, Getting ready for the football game today. Well, guess what we're going to do? Big Bama, Georgia game. We're going to talk about inflation today. Bama's going to inflate the score today. <laughs> well, 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 this is funny. I've been looking at, have you seen the news about this game, about how ticket prices are way down? There's deflation when it comes to uh, the national championship football game. No, no offense, Georgia Bama fans. Not what a lot of the country was hoping to see. Two SEC teams that have already Shocker. battled it out, they battling played. it out again. Five weeks ago. Oh, well, yeah. Yawn. Mm, uh, yeah. yeah, but the last time they did this, it was kind of a thriller. Overtime. Agreed. That ended up being a good game. I'd still prefer another another conference to make an appearance. So, And almost for that reason, that's why I'd like to see Georgia get there. Get their due. Let's see Georgia. I don't know. And the drivers. It's going to be tough. We'll see. It's going to be tough. Tell you what's not tough. We got Joe Cardillo coming back to the basement. He's the guy that helps you train your brain. And if you've had trouble early this year getting back in the saddle, uh, like somebody sitting across the card table from me. What? No. (laughs) Huh? Yes. You had trouble with attention, your attention span. Joe Cardillo. Squirrel. Dr. Joe coming back. Uh, But first, all right. We, of course, have our TikTok minute and we're all about inflation in the headlines. So let's get moving. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our stacking Benjamin's headlines. Our headline comes to us from Investment News. Uh, Jeff Benjamin over at Investment News does a uh, video series. And I watched this one, OG, with him talking to 
Investnet's Dana Dioria, who's the co-CIO over there. Jeff asked Dana what to watch out for in 2022. And she said something that I don't think would shock you, me, or any of the stackers. Inflation topped her list. What do you think? We heard early on that inflation was going to be transitory, that this is going to maybe be the first three, four months of the year, and then we'll get back to normal. You on that train? Well, not having uh, studied macroeconomics in a long time, I think there's got to be a ways to go. You know, I, I just, I, in fact, somebody sent me a text yesterday or a couple days ago that was a screenshot of CNBC. Okay, so you got to follow this. <laughs> like, do, 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 yes. do, do. Yeah. It's a text of a screenshot of CNBC. Anyways, the headline was more small business aid coming. You know, if you follow that, I mean, you and I are business owners. People that listen to the show are business owners. So we had the PPP, right? We had PPP round two. We had emergency lending money, whatever they called that, where you didn't have to pay it back. You got up to whatever, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 for free. Then they had the loan program where you could get 150000 and then they changed it to 500000 and then they changed it to $2 million based on your revenues and stuff like that. So a lot of businesses have applied for a lot of cash and have lots of cash. In addition to that, regular consumers with the stimulus checks that came out with the child tax credit money, I get that that's early. That's not forgiven. That that money well, that that chicken's coming home to roost. Also, you know the whole child tax credit thing later this this spring as people go to file taxes. But a lot of money and not a lot of stuff. So the other side of it is the supply chain things and all the things that people are looking at. Houses and cars are impacted by this, and so too much dollars chasing too few products right now. I think it has to have higher prices, just a regular supply demand type type issue. Whether that leads to like a fall off and all of a sudden everything declines in value, I'm not sold on that. I think I think we're more likely to see like periods of flat for a long time. Like we've got this inflation and then it's gonna be high for a while, and then everything else will catch up and it will seem flat. When I was prepping for this segment, I was digging all over the place, putting in a bunch of different search terms, and I put in funny inflation video, thinking that I might be able to play a soundtrack. And I have to tell you, there is no such thing. There's oh, I've got a great inflation story. It's not a video, but it's easy to understand. So my kids, we pay all our chores and dad bucks. So the Secret Service, if you're listening, uh, it's not real money. I'm not trying to... I did photocopy money print it from the internet, but it's like one-tenth the size. So it's dad bucks. And the whole idea was I was tired of seeing my kids leave their $20 bills from grandma laying around. You know, you'd open a holiday card from last Christmas, and all of a sudden there's a 50 that falls out. It's like, oh, that's sorry, that's mine. It's like, wait, how do you know that's You know, it, just the respect that the kid, they didn't have as much because everything's so digital, you know. So we traded. Now every time they get real cash, they trade that in for dad bucks, which is a one-to-one -one trade right now. My oldest son has accumulated lots of dad bucks, and I'm frustrated that he won't spend it or, or invest it. So we decided that there's going to be inflation in dad buck land, and we're going to reissue the currency. <laughs> and you have, until, <laughs> you have until the end of the month to consume your present dad bucks. Otherwise, everything from that point forward will be priced in dad new dad bucks, which are 50 cents on the dollar of the old dad bucks. You're devaluing your currency? I'm devaluing it, yes. So we're having inflation, basically. Same, same. Wow. So the only, wow. the only possible solution to that, I mean, a little bit of a life lesson in there. The only possible solution to keep up with inflation is to invest it. Get it invested. Get it invested. You can't have it sit in, the, can't have it sit in your bank account, kiddos. You can't have it in your wallet. You have to have it invested at a greater rate and what the inflation is as well. Otherwise, you're losing purchasing power. You might as well go blow it. Yeah. I mean, either lesson. invest it or blow it. That's Just don't let it sit there. That's, that, that's my lesson for the children. I think that's true for us too. You know, you look and say, well, uh, the last real big time of inflation was in the 70s and it was really bad. And there was a couple of other events that happened there also that kind of conspired to create all of that mess all at the same time. But if you think about it from the context of like risk-free rate, right? Like if 
interest rates are really low and then inflation goes up, eventually interest rates have to follow that. It's not exactly linear and it's not, doesn't happen the same day, obviously, right? Right now, your savings account rate is still 0.4 and inflation is six, but that has to eventually adjust upward. And so the more that you can get in an investment that's guaranteed, your savings account, your CD, treasury bonds from the government, the more that your equities have to return to offset that risk-free rate. So the only place to outlast inflation is ownership of companies. You can't do it anywhere else. It's not, and it's not the exact same moment. So it's like, well, but inflation six and the market went down 10 this year. What the heck? Yeah. It's not arbitrage in the second. Yeah. I mean, I get it like that, that minute, it's not going to maybe make sense, but over time, that's the only possible outcome. People wonder how inflation gets started. I did see one video. We'll put it in the 201, our fantastic deeper dive on all of these topics that Brooke Miller from our team largely puts together. Uh, Stackybenjamins.com slash 201. But the gist of it, OG, is this. If, if you get a bunch more money and nobody else does, that's an opportunity. But if everybody gets a ton of money at the same time, back to your point about all this flood of money that we've had coming into into existence with all the programs to keep people afloat. Um, and I've heard people in Washington on uh, both sides of the aisle say, Hey, what else were we going to do? You know, everybody knows the effect of this, but what were we going to do at the time? We're going to be helping people no matter what, but still there will be some consequences. And the consequence is if everybody has more money and they can all afford more, well, then if I run a business and I know everybody can afford more, I have a free pass to increase my prices. And I really should increase my prices because the person next to me is increasing their price to grab some of that yeah, money. I so, mean, again, it just kind of ultimately boils down to too many dollars chasing too few products. Mm -hmm. And if you think back to your economics 101 course, there's that equilibrium of, of price and, and supply and demand. And when you have way more demand and way less supply, the only outcome is higher price. And, and people tolerate it when they have more cash, right? Yeah. yeah. And to hear effectively what OG is saying, you're not just saying that owning stocks is something you need to do to consistently beat inflation over long periods of time. You're also saying, and you're saying this to your kids, that money in a savings account is to some degree dangerous. Yeah. And I mean, it's required. You have to have a cash reserve because, you know, a couple of years ago, we didn't work for a period of time or... You know, you could get laid off or you could have an emergency in your home or something. And so you need to have liquidity because you can't rely on the stock market to have a 27% return the year that you need the money out. Most of the time, you're going to be positive, but yeah, a third of the time you're not, or a little less than a third of the time you're not. And, and so you eliminate the risk of that withdrawal from your portfolio at an inopportune time by having an emergency fund. And if you owe money that you begin diving into this OG, this uh, headline comes to us from Reuters. Hawkish Fed signals it may have to raise rates sooner to fight inflation. Of course, the Fed said a while back they were not going to raise rates for quite a while. And now they're now they're Going back uh, and forth a lot, aren't they? Walking that back, yeah. This piece reads, a very tight job market and unabated inflation may require the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates sooner than expected and begin reducing its overall asset holdings as a second break on the economy, U.S. Central Bank policymakers said in their meeting last month. In a document released last Wednesday, which the markets took as decidedly hawkish, the minutes from the December 14th, 15th policy meeting showed Fed officials uniformly concerned about the pace of price increases that promised to persist alongside global supply bottlenecks well into this this year. So if you owe people money and it's at an adjustable rate, maybe some adjustments headed your way. Yeah. And now is a great time to, you know, the first of the year kind of relooking at your balance sheet, updating your cash flow, projecting out, you know, what you want to save for the year and doing all those sorts of things. But the other side of your balance sheet, the stuff that you owe or potentially going to owe is also an important area to consider too, because at the end of the day, you know, that has an impact on cash flow or, you know, how fast you can pay the debt off. If you're carrying a credit card with 20% interest right now, there is 
every single day in my inbox a letter from a credit card company saying, we'll give you 0% for a year. You know, they just want your cash right now. And if you've got equity in your house and you have a whole bunch of other debt, you should be considering a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan because interest rates on that are sub three right now. If your house hasn't been refinanced in the last three years or four years, probably makes sense to consider looking at that also, depending on how much time is left, because we're seeing people still who are able to reduce their house from a 30-year note to a 15-year note and lower the payment because of the sheer change in interest rate. You know, your interest rate was four and a quarter for a 30-year note. Now you can get two for 15. That wipes out the 15-year, you know, the, the, the change in the time period increase just because of the interest rate decrease. And so you end up saving money and saving, you know, copious amounts of interest 15 years. So there's lots of opportunities right now. I mean, if you have a car loan and you haven't considered refinancing it, you know, Navy Federal is a sponsor of ours and they do fantastic work. I don't know why you wouldn't consider refinancing. I mean, that's a thing that you didn't think of 15 years ago. It wasn't a thing. Refinancing a car loan. I don't mean refinance it like pull equity out. I don't mean that. Right. I mean, you know, Go if, invest if, you're, if you're paying Toyota, yeah, exactly. Although right now, you know, maybe, you're, maybe your car has appreciated and you can go get a loan. Uh, I could see the arbitrage. No, I'm kidding. Don't do it. But, but you know, you're paying Toyota 7% or 6%. Go to Navy Federal or whatever and go get two. Sometimes you got to play the cards that are dealt to you in the game. You know, I mean, I've talked to lots of people in the last six months who are like, kind of sort of can't beat them, join them. You know, like yeah. I know I'm supposed to pay off my debt. I know I'm supposed to have a 15 year mortgage and get that stuff knocked out. But screw it, those idiots want to give me one and a half percent for 30 years. I'll take it. Over the it. short term, I'll just make it hurt a little less. Yeah, save the money. Like, yeah. you know, I'll save the cash flow. Keep it in your pocket instead of somebody else's. Uh, we'll have links to all the resources we talked about today at uh, stackingbenjamins.com in the show notes. And of course, deeper dives into inflation, what it's all about, how it works, how to combat inflation at uh, the 201, stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Time for our TikTok minute where OG and I Oh, this is going to be a good one, I can tell. A TikToker dropping some financial knowledge on us. And sometimes it's financial knowledge I roll, other times it's financial knowledge with a, you know, last remember last week's prenups. We brought it seriously. It's too, too so, serious. Yeah, so are we so it's going It's got to be a joke. Are we going serious twice, two weeks in a row or are we uh, bringing it this week? Got it. Got to be a joke. Well, let's take a look. This is a uh, gentleman named Alan Smith gave us this one. Uh, tell us what you got, Alan. All right. Here's a little life hack that I wanted to share with you guys that I do that I think could you could benefit with having it in your life. Um, every few weeks when I'm running errands, I'll stop by my buddy Wally's office and grab a stack of his business cards. That way, if I'm ever at a shopping center or something and accidentally run into another car and people are watching, I can just leave one of Wally's cars underneath their windshield wiper. Works pretty good. That took me a minute to understand what the hell he was talking about. Yeah. Get his buddy's business card. Cute. Get his get his buddy in trouble for ramming into somebody's. Imagine the call that Wally gets. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm calling about uh, my car that you hit. What? Yeah, you were at the uh, you, you uh, hit my car in the shopping center parking lot. I wasn't in that shopping center parking lot. Just imagine. Says here you were. Yes. So why'd you leave your card? Yeah, that wasn't me. It's like the thing that I saw on Twitter the other day. Side Hustle Monday. Ready for this one, Joe? I don't know if you saw this or not. Side Hustle Monday. We're on Monday, so it works. Side Hustle Monday. Here we go. Step number one, buy a 3D printer. Okay, you're writing these down. Step number two, print a 3D printer. Step number three, have that printer print a 3D printer. Slowly come to terms that you have broken the second law of thermodynamics. <laughs> the name of the grind, print more 3D printers. Have each printer print a single printer each day. After 30 days, you will have 1,073,741,824 printers. Sell each printer for 1000 bucks. Smile. You just made a trillion dollars of profit. And you won. Super easy. You heard it here first. Stackybenjamins.com people. You got to tell all your friends that this is, this is where we drop the serious knowledge. I thought that was really good. 
coming up in a, in a few minutes, uh, Dr. Joe Cardillo, he was here before giving us the basics on how your brain worked last time he was here so that you're able to better understand that stuff that's going on in your head that makes you make or lose money. Today, we had him back because it's time for us to pay better attention in 2022. Focus on the stuff that matters. How do we do that? Dr. Joe Cardillo, of course, will have all that. But uh, first, we got this guy coming down. Look at him, man. Putting down the donut. Okay. Doug, what do you got for us? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I was just talking to the good doctor upstairs. Turns out these brains we have are wild, man. Like, we think we have a ruler for measuring life, and the ruler turns out to be an overcooked Pappardelle noodle. Speaking of your noodle, noodle on today's trivia question. There's an emotional bias that, according to Investopedia, the great psychological publication causes people like you and me to value an object we own more highly, often irrationally, than it's really worth. Do you hear that, Ma? Let the beanie babies go. They ain't coming back. Anyway, my question is, what is the effect called? Is it the mine mentality, the endowment effect, or the finder's keeper's principle? I'll be back with an answer after I make sure no one's touching my micro machines. I actually had a pretty good holiday this year, OG. I did not uh, overspend, which is cool. How about you? Nice. Uh, I didn't, did not not overspend. <laughs> Well, guess what? Navy Federal can help you take control of your finances after the holidays, OG. You can get a low intro APR on their platinum credit card. And that is not a great idea unless you are consolidating debt or number two, you pay down your debts in full and you're looking at a better reward program because you can get a low intro APR on that card. It's their lowest rate card. And it's a great tool to consolidate your debt. Navy Federal even has multiple savings and investing options to help you get closer to your financial goals. They offer digital tools and educational resources to help guide your decisions. With Navy Federal, you can automate your savings and investing and put your money to work for you even as you sleep. And nothing OG likes better than sleeping. Than sleep. Yes. You're not counting sheep, you're counting Benjamins as you fall asleep. Plus, you can buy fractional shares. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. That's NavyFederal.org. Uh, message and data rates may apply. Savings products insured by NCUA. Investment options are available through Navy Federal Investment Services and are not insured by NCUA. Hey there, stackers. I'm psychological mastermind and Pavlovian drool pool boy, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Ever notice how those buttons advertisers want you to click on, say, get your ticket today or book your seat now? It's because when we get a sense that something is ours, we value it more highly. It's the same reason there's a bunch of stocks you should probably say goodbye to. Today's question was this, what's that emotional bias called? Behavioral economists call this the endowment effect because, I guess, when you're majorly endowed with something. Oh, oh boy. Um, never mind. Has Dr. Cardillo left yet? No? Okay. L uh, we better let him have the mic. I'm in deep water here. And here he comes down the stairs to mom's basement. Our good friend, Dr. Joe Cardillo is back. How are you? Hello. Good. How are you? I'm, I'm so glad to see you again. <laughs> Happy New Year. Same. Well, let's pick up right where we left off. I want to begin actually with, with a quote from your book, because I think this will lay out what we're talking about. And, and I feel like, and, and you know this better than I do, <clears throat> Joe, that people are becoming more and more frazzled. We've got so many things on our mind all this stuff the last two years. I don't know if you know this, but the world's changed a little bit the last two years. You write this at the beginning of chapter seven. Bill is an administrator for a city arts center. Late one Sunday night, he was finalizing edits on a grant application that was due by the end of the next day. 
too tired to think clearly any longer and having just a few changes left to make on the application, he called it quits and hit the proverbial sack. The next morning, he pushed the snooze button on his cell phone several times before getting out of bed. He would have loved another hour of sleep, but that wasn't going to happen. As the morning progressed, one thing led to another. Life became hectic. The grant slipped further down Bill's to-do list. And that afternoon, when he finally had a moment to think more freely again, he remembered that part of it still needed editing, but he couldn't remember which parts needed more work. Fatigue from the late night before and his busy day had left him feeling mentally and energetically glitched. He scrolled the application a few times, but still couldn't locate anything to jog his memory about the edits. To make things worse, his stress over finishing the application on time was increasing. With time slipping away, he made an executive decision, pushed the send key, and sped the application on its way without the edits hoping for the best. I can't tell you how many times, Joe, I've done that. And most of our listeners, I'm sure have done that where I'm like, hope it's good and just send it out. What's, what's going on there? Well, (laughs) we're under pressure. We're all, we're all under pressure. And some of that pressure comes from ourselves, you know, whether we really need to set push send at that particular moment or not. But what's going on there is this little voice in our head telling us, listen, there, there's something left undone. And, you know, we're weighing that against the pressure we're putting on ourselves to get it done. And, you know, we're siding with that and we go with it. I've done that myself several times. I mean, it is a pretty common thing to do. And then most of the time, we what we really need to do is remember how we regret it <laughs> later, right? So we've got to be careful with that. You know, take a look at the situation and see if we could give ourselves a little more time on that. Let's go back to the beginning. And I want to, you know, at the risk of repeating some of the stuff we talked about when you were here before, which was this great conversation. Tell us about this inner working of this fantastic mechanism on the top of our head. I think you have such insight into what's really going on up there that maybe you can help our listeners get a handle on how to have better control over our brain. You know, there's a couple things that come into play here. And going back to the scenario that you just described, our habits, you know, we'll call them habits, kick in so fast in a millisecond that we can we can hardly control them. And that's why, you know, in that scenario you described, we push the send button. Because what's happening upstairs is that when we go into a situation, it doesn't matter what it is, um, even as we're talking here, what happens is, is our, our mind creates a sort of miniature situation, a micro situation that's similar to the one that we're in. And very quickly, in, within seconds, it's sending scouts out throughout the rest of our mind And it's coming back with information for us. So we got this little micro situation of the one we're in. Very quickly, the scouts go out through our memories, through our thoughts, through our emotions, through our actions, and so on. The last time we were in a similar situation, or even multiple times. And then the little scouts, let's call them scouts, come back and report to us very quickly what they found out. And then we select If we haven't done anything to interrupt that process, to try to regulate that process and change it, we're going to go with whatever is dominant, whatever we've done most of the time. So for me, when I push that send button, it's something that I've done most of the time. And and so that's why I say, if we do it again, we need to change that. It's one of these things where we must change it if we want to regulate it in the future. So, you know, it's just a common thing for all of us, no matter what it is, you know, we create this micro situation. I feel like it's like a war room up there, the way you talk about it. Like we've got headquarters, we got the scouts. Okay, we got a situation, people. Let's get out there. And then the scouts go searching for stuff. And depending on what they come up with, how they come back, then we make these decisions based on what they find and what they don't. Well, yeah. And and the thing is, is that we either use the headquarters or we don't. If we don't use them, most of the time we don't. You know, we go through the day. We're not really thinking, should I do this? Should I not? We're just doing it. You know, the last time I looked at any percentages, you know, about 96 percent of our day is is done on automatic pilot. Wow. I mean, if, you, if we really think about sure. it, everything, 
everything that we do is pretty much on automatic pilot. So for the important things, we should take some time and ask ourselves beforehand is, you know, is this the way I want things to turn out? That's a great, How, that's a great place to dive in, by the way. If we want 2022 to be an intentional year then and to mm -hmm. focus attention on the right things how, and to make it different, to your point, where do we start there? Well, I, I really like what you just said. I mean, in, in a couple of my books, I wrote this sentence and, and it's kind of like a little mantra to myself. Intention without attention can be downright dangerous. Mm. <laughs> So, I mean, if there's something important that we're intending to do, we need to bring attention into it so that we can try to regulate it the best we can, you know, with the most care that we can. Uh, you know, the, my book gives a, a hundred different ways. I mean, yeah. maybe more <laughs> you know, that we can play around with doing that. So our, this attention mechanism that we have in our head uh, we can have a lot of fun getting into it and learning how to control it and learning how to use it to help ourselves out into, you know, a better life and better days. But there are certain things like the difference between mindfulness, awareness and attention, because we tend to use those words almost like they're the same thing. And they're really not. They're associated, but they're really not. And if we can learn how to how to use those machines, our mindfulness machine, our awareness machine, and our attention machine, if we can learn how to use those separately and also if we can synchronize them, we can create an attentional power or a focus power that's greater than the sum of its parts. And that might just be one of the better things that I have to offer uh, in terms of focus. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that there's, you know, when you talk about the power of attention, like it's just the beginning. There's so many things going on in your brain and to have them all dovetail and get congruent can be powerful. And you have techniques about, you have a massage technique in the book. You talk about a lot of different techniques to help your brain get more focused. I want to ask about the role of sleep because I'm reading more and more about sleep, sleep in your brain. It, 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 it sounds to me in that bill example that we kicked off with bill just needs a nap, Joe. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if, if bill took a nap, maybe he would be able to focus better. I find the older I get, the more, the more man, good sleep versus bad sleep is, is either wreaking havoc on my brain or my brain's working right. Talk to me about sleep in your brain. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things that, we want to pay attention to there. Um, one of the things is that if we sleep well, our mind continues to function. So I've got an issue that I'm trying to solve. You know, maybe we're writing a grant as in the earlier example, yeah. and it's not quite done yet. If I give myself a good night's sleep, it, it's not like my mind just goes away. I continue to work on that, even though I'm not working on it consciously. And that's why sometimes we wake up after a good night's sleep, we're taking a shower or whatever we do, we're having a cup of coffee, and all of a sudden the answer comes to us like that. And we didn't do anything. And we're kind of, you know, it's kind of an uncanny feeling. It's a good feeling because we didn't have to work for it, but it just happens. Or, you know, where we get up in the morning and we take a walk and the answer comes to us like that. And yeah. we're like, wow. You know, where'd that come from? It really isn't such a phenomenon. It's more that our mind is working underneath it all very stresslessly and very well looking for the answer that we would like to have. We just got to give it a chance to do that. I would, um, and, th I would think that not to cut you up, but I would think that nutrition also plays a big part in it. Feeding it the right stuff must play well, a huge part that. in it. Yeah. Yeah. All, you know, I mean, you don't want to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee before you go to sleep or, you know, I mean, <laughs> right. some, I, you know, some individuals can do that, you know, but you don't want to do anything that'll disturb your deeper sleep. You know, when we're sleeping, you know, one of the things that we're building up in our body is, is serotonin. And serotonin is uh, necessary to balance off adrenaline and so on. But serotonin is also necessary for higher level thinking and higher level cognitive decisions. So, you know, that plays in as well. So that, you know, when in our earlier example, 
when someone wakes up in the morning and they're groggy and they didn't get a good night's sleep and they, they, they need to function, they need to be on top of their game cognitively, it's going to be an uphill battle. So you need, you need to allow your body to do what it needs to do also to feed your attention. And part of it, again, is allowing it to get into a deeper sleep and allowing, you know, to increase its serotonin level. I would think then, based on what you're talking about with serotonin here, I would think then, and, and tell me if this is right. I know zero about science. You forgot more about science, Joe, than I will ever know. So <laughs> the, when I look at this, I think if I only have limited amounts of serotonin, setting up my schedule correctly also so that those big thought moments, those big time moments that I give myself enough time for my brain to be able to focus and mm -hmm. give my brain enough time to have runway to do the things it needs to do also is largely important. Absolutely. And I think that as we ask people to get in, in touch with their, the way their body affects their mind and vice versa, because, you know, we know it's a two way street. But our body can also affect our mind. You know, if our mind is kind of groggy, let's say, or if our mind is depressed or dull, the more we become attuned to things that energize our body, the more we can use that to affect the mind. So an energized body can pull the mind out of a funk, let's say. Do you have techniques to reduce all this head clutter? You know, I'm thinking it's funny when you were writing about head clutter in different places in the book, right? Because we always have swirling crap going on in our brain. I thought of Sherlock Holmes, and I remember this story where Watson asks Sherlock about something going on, some piece of trivia going on. And Sherlock Holmes surprisingly knows absolutely nothing about it. He doesn't know who the people are involved. He doesn't know. And, and Watson goes, it's in all the papers. You read the paper every day. Why? How do you not know? And Sherlock Holmes says something about, I only have so much space in my brain. So I focus on the things that are the big things that affect me. And the rest, I just don't read. Is there any truth in what Sir Cunan Doyle <laughs> said there? And in Sherlock Holmes talking about there's so much, so much space in your brain, or is there, are there techniques that we can use to get rid of all this trivia that we stuff into our heads? Yes, to all of that. Um, yes. And, and that brings us back to the idea that we're on automatic pilot most of the day. The fact that we're on automatic pilot is neither, uh, you know, it's mostly a good thing. I mean, evolution has brought us to this point. And the automatic pilot that we're on is there to reduce the amount of attention that we have to pay to things. That's why most of us have experienced driving a long distance and all of a sudden snapping out of it and going, oh, my God, you know, I wasn't paying attention the whole way here. <laughs> I mean, we've all done that. You know, I've driven um, to my I've, I think you write about this in the book, too. I've driven to my old house before. <laughs> I've I'm not thinking I'm an autopilot. My brain takes me to where I used to live. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely. If, if you've recently moved or, you know, same with phone numbers, you know, you're calling your old phone number, you know, it, it, same thing. Yeah, these are these are automatic habits that just trigger in order to save us time and save us headspace and everything else, because our attention pipeline is limited. It's limited in how long we can concentrate. And it's also limited in, in how long we can even keep it open. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that evolution has done for us is given us all these automatic, let's call them habits that allow us to go through the day without having to think about too many things. I mean, if I had to think about everything I did, there wouldn't be time for anything important. <laughs> well, 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 I'm thinking about if I had to think about the way that I just moved my arm there, but That's you know, right. seeing your point, or I had to walk to get here to the basement, like every step, if I had to think about every step along the way, holy cow, there's room for nothing else. Yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create habits that facilitate that. That's all. So if, you know, if we know that a certain time of day is going to get cluttered for us, we want to create habits. And, and what are habits? Habits are, you know, the, this micro situation that I described earlier that, that is created in our mind as soon as we're in a situation and the scouts go out and bring back the information and kick in the habit. We want to create habits that those scouts will bring back, kick in automatically and relieve us of having to think about anything, just like a golf swing or a tennis swing, you know, or, or any other habit that we're trying to perfect. Once we perfected it, it's done. I love we want to edit it. Well, and I love this idea and I love this. Well, I love the power of editing and we wanting to edit. 
Because what I don't want people to miss here is that instead of living on autopilot, you can make this choice to direct your brain where you need it to go, which means, and we talk about this all the time on the show, Joe, that if you start with your values and work backward, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. start with your values, plan your day based on your values. And then you're saying you can direct your mind toward those valuable things to you. Autopilot now becomes a powerful thing, right? Instead of becoming a distraction, autopilot becomes your best friend because you're autopiloting directly Mm -hmm. toward these things you value. Right. So two things come into play is one, you're getting rid of or editing, dismissing autopiloted coordinates, let's call them behaviors that get you into trouble myself too. I mean, I've got to do this on a constant basis. You know, you take a look at what's kicking in automatically, what's getting you into trouble and eliminate it. That alone will give you more headspace, more control, better days, and help you hit your goals more accurately. But now if you can sub just getting rid of the stuff that's bringing you down, but Now, if you create new habits, new coordinates that are more in sync with whatever goal you have in mind, now you've got a double-edged sword. You've gotten rid of the bad. That gives you more energy. That at least prevents you from getting yourself into a hassle. On the other hand, you've created a new habit or a new set of coordinates that'll hit the target. So now you're feeling a lot better. You've eliminated headspace and you've made it automatic until you want to change again. And then you just get in there and edit it again. And it's not so difficult. It's really pretty easy. We create habits without knowing it. (laughs) Well, well, that's what I love from the first time you were here is that I remember how powerful that was, that uh, just this idea, just really the double-edged sword. I mean, cleaning out the bad habits which, which we think, okay, I can do that, but that's half the battle. I'm, I'm a horrible golfer. And frankly, I like like the first seven or eight holes of golf. And then I think, what the hell am I still doing out here? Like, it's just, it's just too long. But when I golf, what I have learned is half the game is staying out of the weeds, staying out of trouble. And if I stay out of trouble and instead of trying to hit the perfect shot, I do great. And that's kind of the first half of what you talk about. And then the second half of creating good habits is, is that second half. I have one more question for you uh, before we go, but before we get to that, the book, which we don't have many guests on talking about a book twice, but this is so important for 2022. It's the 12 rules of attention, how to avoid screw ups, free up headspace, do more and be more at work. And frankly, I don't even think we need the words at work, Joe. I, I think just be, be more. Cause you know, I look at being more with your family, with your money, with your whole you know, stacking some Benjamins, man, uh, working on all that. Uh, But the book is available everywhere, I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, My last question though, is this, there's a comedian, Emo Phillips, who I'm not sure if you're aware of Emo, but Emo has this, uh, this thing he says, he said, you know, I was walking down the street the other day and I realized that my brain is by far the smartest part of my body. And then I realized, well, look, who's telling me that. (laughs) <laughs> is that true? Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your brain answered that question, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Of course, it's going to agree. My brain is partisan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great gift. It's a great gift to yourself. Dr. Joe Cardillo, thanks for hanging out with us again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. I'm Liz, the chief mom officer. And when I'm not busy being the breadwinner of my family of five, I'm stacking Benjamins. Big thanks to Dr. Joe. Train your brain, OG. Focus on how the synapses connect and uh, you will reap the rewards. Hey, let's throw out the Haven Lifeline and tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency, they put what you value first. I think I'm going to get into this 3D printer thing and get my mind right. (laughs) It's your loved ones and your time. And with all that money you're going to make in 30 days. Man, but I don't know how you're going to store the 3D printers, but, uh, or the, the, uh, I think the FedEx people come into your house. Hey, you do have to like account for shipping in that. That's not a pure yeah. thousand dollars of profit after you take out shipping. No, ship, shipping's where storage they get costs. you. That is, that is where they get you. Yeah. I mean, it's going to sit on a boat off the coast for how long? And then your printers are only worth like a hundred dollars. So. Off the coast of Dallas? <laughs> Ship it's gonna sit off <laughs> sit off the coast of the Trinity River. 
<laughs> the, it's, it's your loved ones in your time. It's why they made buying quality term life insurance actually simple. Head to stackybedjamins.com slash Haven Life now for a free quote. Their application is simple. It's online. You get an instant coverage decision, affordable prices, and all policies issued by their parent company, Mass Mutual. And today, we're going to throw out the lifeline to Tusk. Say hi, Tusk. Hi, guys. I was wondering what your thoughts were on the idea of tying the fixed income portion of your portfolio to a specific dollar amount as opposed to a percentage. Say you did 36 months of living expenses, and then once you retire, you use that as a buffer to ride out any type of downturn in the market. Uh, what are your thoughts on that idea, and how would you recommend someone implement it? Should you just contribute to a fixed income portion of your portfolio annually, or does it make more sense to wait to a later date, like 50 years old, and then start kind of building up that fund slowly over a couple of years? Thanks for all your insight. Hey, Tosh, thanks for the question. And we're going to dive into fixed income. For those of you new to the program, if you can stomach the roller coaster ride, OG prefers having all equities because historically that's where you've gotten ahead uh, is by avoiding it. However, everybody's looking for that, uh, that middle ground. And the thing everybody worries about is what if your equities are down at the same time that, um, that you need to start taking out cash. So what do you think about that middle ground? Yeah, that's the only worry about about equity investing is you needing the money and it being January of 2009. And you're like, crap, market's down 40%. I don't want to sell this stuff right now. I know I'm supposed to hold it forever, but I got to pay rent. So what do I do? The, the way that you offset that is you have to have some money that's liquid in case you do have a decline, a substantial decline. I mean, obviously... I think some of this is education and recognizing what's normal and what's not normal. You know, a 10% decline, the NASDAQ going from 400 or 4,000 for 15,000, whatever it's at. <laughs> don't say 4,000. Don't say that, OG. Oh, don't, don't jinx us like that. Um, 15,000 down 1,500 points. The media will tell you, oh my gosh, the NASDAQ's down 1,500 points in the last three trading days. That's 10%. Right, a ten percent decline in anything at any period of time over any period of time is so boring it might as well not even be news. We get ramped up about it, like oh my god, I'm done, done. it's common as dirt. The average intra-year decline. So you think about like January first through through December thirty first, and there's going to be a high water mark sometime this year. Right. And then there's going to be some low water marks sometime this year. We don't know when that's going to be, but we know that at some point in time, there'll be a high. And at some point in time, there'll be a low. And then we'll finish the year on December 31 and we'll say, well, we started on this and ended on that. It did this roller coaster along the way. We're up 8% or whatever the number is. So that peak to trough, that high to low in the year, the average is a minus 14 and a half over the last 80 years. So until you get a minus 15, from your high water mark in that year, you're still not even average. So you have to like kind of recondition yourself to what is, you know, a decline and where, you know, where do we have to like start having some thoughts around what to do next? So until you're down 15% from your high, pfft, yawn, don't even pay attention to it. That's what I would say. Which is hard, which is it's hard. It's super difficult, especially if you're just new to investing and you just put in, you know, you put in your 20,000 bucks this year for your 401k for the first time and you wake up and now you have 18,000. You're like, well, I thought I was supposed to make money on this deal. Time is what matters. So let's talk about the stuff beyond that. So you sign off on the fact I'm going to get my minus 10s and I'm going to be okay with it. Minus 15s. I'm not going to like it, but I'm going to be okay. What happens if I retire and I retire on January 1st, of 2008 and January 1st, 2009, I'm down 40%. Like, what do I do then? And the way that you offset that, because again, if we recognize that given enough time, the stock market always recovers, always has, can't promise it always will, but I mean, we got 100 some odd years, 200 years worth of data always has. So give it enough time. What's the average time that we need? The average time is about 30 months. So you could have 30 months worth of expenses to Tusk's point here, in in real dollars, as opposed to saying, well, I'm going to have 20% of my portfolio. I'm, I spend $60,000 a year, so I need to have 180000 That's three years worth, or 150000 
or 120,000, like somewhere in that range, that dollar amount in a bucket that's break glass in case of emergency. And what that allows you to do, and this is what we recommend, is you determine in advance what your threshold is where you're going to break that glass. It can't be 15 or lower because we just established that 15 or lower is normal. So let's say you say it's 25. If my portfolio is down 25%, I'm going to stop taking money out of my portfolio and start taking it out of my break glass in case of emergency money. And you do that until you run out. Because if you do that, it gives your portfolio enough time to do whatever the heck it's going to do and then recover uh, you know, within a couple of years. So, so instead of having a percentage of your portfolio, I totally support having a, a flat dollar amount. Having the dollar amount. As far as timing goes, you kind of brought that up at the end. I don't see any necessity to do that anytime soon. You know, if you're going to retire in a year from now, maybe start thinking about it. If you're going to retire in 10 years from now, I wouldn't spend any energy on it because you need that last double. That's kind of a mantra of ours is, you know, you got to get the last double. So don't, don't start taking money off the table right when you're about to get that last 10 year double, you know, or that last eight year double. But I think there's nothing wrong with slowly building that over time because that can also act as a second tier cash reserve. Yeah. I mean, if you asked me to design a perfect retirement plan scenario, I would have six months worth of money, emergency money in my local savings account, my credit union account, just there. I would have two years worth of money in very short term fixed income, government bonds, something that's liquid, but but I can get to. And then the rest of my money will be in stocks. Thanks for the question, Tusk. And if you've got a question for us, head to stackingbenjamins.com slash voicemail. And not only will OG succinctly answer your question like he did today, but we'll also... Uh, Is that succinct, though? <laughs> it was good. It was drop the mic good. Uh, we'll also send you a code for a t-shirt from our t-shirt friend in Cincinnati, Brad Lark, and uh, Flying Pork Apparel. Uh, some funny stuff he's got there, but it's our Haven Life Greatest Money Show on Earth Circus t-shirt. All right, that's going to do it for today. There are a ton of people to thank, and we're going to leave that to Doug. But most of all, we want to thank you. I have been sending out books, OG, but I am still way, way, way behind. So for people that have sent me their uh, review, uh, a screenshot of their review that they left, I'm making mom happy and actually cleaning up some of uh, some of the mess here in the basement. Uh, people send us uh, review copies of their books to prep for the interviews that we do. And once I read them once, I, I don't have room for all these books. So time to find a new place. And for people to leave us reviews, we throw your name in the hat and uh, try to give them out. But I've gone to the post office now a couple times, but man, we're still at the end of, we're at the end of last summer. In terms of reviews, but I'm absolutely loving doing it. I'm loving some of the Don't conversations. Don't be surprised if Joe sends you a copy of his own book instead of somebody else's. <laughs> I I didn't, you know what's funny is that uh, uh, as part of my deal, Avery, the Penguin Random House imprint that we're on, gave me 40. I got 40 copies. And I'm like, what am I going to do with 40 copies? They are gone. We did one event. And they are they are long gone. So no, I, I wish I had more copies to give away. We give those out like butter. All right, uh, but that's going to do it. I actually have one one copy left, um, and we might talk about that at a different time. But all right, that's going to do it for today. And last but not least, by a mile, if you're looking for better financial moves in 2022, and you want to dream bigger in 2022 and beyond, OG and his team are working with new clients. So head to stackybenjamins.com slash OG, and that is their calendar and the first step toward seeing how they can interface with your team to dream bigger in 2022. All right, that's it. Doug, you got it from here. What should we have learned today? Sure thing, Joe. I'll tell everybody what they should have learned today. First, your brain is more trainable than you think. You should consider working it out just like any other muscle in your body. Second, it's not okay to steal people's business cards to leave at the scene of a crime. But it's pretty funny. But the big lesson? If holding on to stocks for a long time means that I'm endowed, that must mean that I'm, well, um, but thank you. 
Thanks so much to Joseph Cardillo. His book, 12 Rules of Attention, is available wherever fine books are sold. Our show is written in part by Paulette Perhatch, who helps writers power their words, their work, and their earning potential with her Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program, which starts January 19th. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2022, and is created by Joe Saul Seahot. Our producer is Karen Rapine. After you listen to our show, check out our show notes page and the 201 Deep Dives written by our website manager and blog editor, Brooke Miller. You'll find all things money at the 201, our newsletter at stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Once we get all of this goodness bottled up, it goes over to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart, who helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to talk about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude is our social media coordinator and room mother in our Facebook group, The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. Here's a weird fact. She and Tina Eichenberg are never in the same room at the same time. To join all The Basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, reminding you that if you think you're too small to make a difference, you've never been in bed with a mosquito. Oh, gee, lately around uh, all of the events that happened at the end of last year, my uh, my brother passed away and uh, the book launch uh, very close together within a week of each other. I've received floods of email and I take it seriously when people email me and I want to email everybody back. Uh, but there has been just a ton of email. So thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone for your, your thoughts and for, uh, for some of the, the, the great emails you sent me. Um, I read them all. I read them all. Haven't had time to reply. Hope I do get time to reply to everybody, but, uh, have not had time. I did receive one email, however, yesterday, uh, that hit me hard about the work that we do. You know, you and I sit here and we turn on the microphone and we, and we, uh, hey, we play podcast and it's a, it is a great time and there's nothing I'd rather do than, than do this. It has been super fun and uh, hopefully will continue to be super fun for a long, long, long time. But we do some serious work here and uh, I got this note from Liz. Liz says, hi, this might be odd, but my husband listened to your podcast for years and never missed one. He's 35 did a lot of different money decisions in the last three years, such as opening brokerage accounts and Ross, which I'm sure he learned from you. Unfortunately, he passed away two months ago unexpectedly. I never really listened to your podcast unless we were in the car and stuff with him. He talked about finances all the time. And while I've retained a lot of what he talked about, not all of it, how could I learn maybe the high level of what he potentially learned from listening to your podcast? I have a lot of financial decisions to make and soon and want to honor him this way as much as I can. Hope this isn't too weird of a message. Thanks. And that came to me yesterday from Liz and I sent Liz a note back, uh, thanking her for that, for that note and, uh, expressing, expressing my condolences. And also I did have a book left. Oh gee. And, and while, Stacked might not be what she's looking for. It is an order of operations book. 
And it is think about this first, this second, this third, this fourth. So told her that I would send her out a copy of uh, a copy of the book and which, you know, feels pretty little and shallow. Yeah. But, um, but there's stackers out there who really, really need this help. So when you're done with the book, give it to somebody else. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you know, what we have tried to do, I think over the last, uh, long time of doing this is, you know, try to make it fun. And obviously you did a good job on your eh, marginal job, I think is a better <laughs> assessment of, of it on your book. But, um, Emily did a great job. Your, your jokes kind of landed flat. I'll be honest, but we try to make it fun and, and still, you know, for whatever reason, it's a weird thing to talk about money with other people. You know, there's a sense of FOMO and shame and regret and, you know, all this other sort of stuff. And it doesn't have to be, you'll tell, you'll tell a complete stranger all of the medical problems you have, but you wouldn't tell your best friend about the credit card debt, you know? And, uh, uh, so we're, I think trying in our little world here to open the, the lines of communication for that. So if you're done with it, you know, give it to somebody else who can help or, you know, if you're not done with it, buy them one. It's 30 bucks. You know? <laughs> but um, I think the main thing is that we have to continue to try to add education here and continue to try to change the stigma of, of personal finance being, you know, like a weird thing. It's just, we all make mistakes and we all, you know, try to do better. So help your people, people. <laughs>